Well, good afternoon and welcome to another exciting webinar hosted by Workies with our guest, uh, Service Business Evolution, SBE. So happy to have Derek, uh, Derek Hofrichter, um, outstanding SBE coach and trainer, uh, you know, just an overall awesome guy. Derek, thank you so much for being with us today again. Thanks. I'm super happy to be here. Uh, I had a lot of fun. This is our second one together, right? I had a lot of fun on that on that first one. And partly too, like uh, maybe some people caught the first one. Maybe they didn't. These are both standalone, but they're also connected. Yeah. Uh, right, Edward, the last time we got together, we talked about filling the board up with opportunities, being busy year round. This is the companion because if we fill the board up, but nothing happens on those opportunities that that's also a problem so this is a good uh standalone topic but a good companion topic that that is a huge problem and i am I, i've got this sinking suspicion that today you you're you're going to share with us how we can prevent that from happening right elimination uh right <laughs> eliminate those zero dollar calls so um i see i see people saying hello and everything in the in the chat i love that i love the interactive uh, side of this. So I, I just want to give everyone permission that if they want to throw comments in there, questions in there, uh, I see it. It's right in front of me. So if I need to clarify things or Edward, if you see something and we just want to pause and uh, talk about it, that, that'll kind of be how we uh, roll through this. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to be your co-pilot because, um, you know, I, I think you're a, a way better driver. Plus, you know, we invited you f here for your for your knowledge. So I will definitely man the chat channels. I also just wanted everyone to know, please rest assured, okay? If you happen to be attending today and you're running a locksmith business or a landscaping business, or maybe you're an underwater basket weaver, which by the way, if you are, I wanna know how you found out about this webinar. Yeah. <laughs> but like uh, in any case, Please do not think that this is not the webinar for you, even though we have spelled out, you know, productive, uh, how, how to be more productive for an HVAC plumbing uh, and electrical company. Th this pertains to any kind of business. I mean, Derek, you and I were chatting before you said you incorporated a lot of these same strategies when you were running fitness centers, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Roofing, okay. fitness centers, uh, lawn care, that's my background, right? So yeah, all, all these things are in accumulation. And um, yeah, I'm glad you said that because just as a little intro, you know, about me, I work for SBE, Service Business Evolution, and our specialty, our our uh, experience, our skill set is working with HVAC plumbing and electrical companies, helping them with basically all aspects of their business from pricing to uh, strategies to accountability and training and helping them eliminate $0 calls to run more productive visits. So all the examples that I use and kind of the terminology that I talk about are going to be through that lens of HVAC and primarily HVAC. But I'm glad you said that because the principles are the principles and they apply to whatever you're doing. Right. Awesome. Well, cool. So yes, again, to, to Derek's point, please do not hesitate. We got a handyman joining us today. Do not hesitate to ask a question. Please don't be afraid because I guarantee you someone else has the same question and they're just being too bashful to ask. So uh, we'll try to pepper in some questions in between and, and get to everyone's questions. But uh, in the spirit of you know time, we understand that is of the essence and we're not gonna try to take up too much of yours today. So we didn't really put like a firm end time on this, but you know we're gonna try to keep it to around 35, 40 minutes. Uh, yeah. And then if you want to stay on and ask extra questions, by all means, stay on. We'll keep it going. But also, if uh, you know someone that registered for today's event, they're unable to attend, do not worry. We are recording it. We'll have it live on, uh, well, it's not going to be live. <laughs> We're going to have recording of it on uh, workies.com. And uh, we'll also make sure to send it out and you can forward it to your friends and it'll be there. Yeah, so should we get started? Yeah, let's get started. I mean, I've got one really important question, though. Let's just say I, I love uh, SBE. I love Workies. I, I love Derek Space. I don't know. And, and I was like, I'm going to come to this webinar. I don't even know what a $0 call is. 
reason I say this is because I actually had a couple of people in my organization say, what exactly is a zero dollar call? And I was like, well, it's whenever you got to roll a truck and go out and visit somebody, you're not making any money. I mean, that's so, my definition. So, what Edward, do you, what do you define a zero dollar call as being, Derek? You know, Edward, as far as I know, we did not coordinate this at all. And yeah. you asked an amazing question. What is a zero dollar oh, call? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that is the question because, you know, yes, when we collect zero dollars, obviously, right, the literal definition, but in my world, it's more expansive than that. Mm -hmm. It's it's also when we only collect diagnostic or trip fees, right? If, if uh, you know, if we charge a $79, $99 trip fee to come out there and that's all we collected, to me, that's a zero dollar call. Yeah. It, it means, you know, what, uh, whatever we're finding, whatever we're recommending, whatever we're talking about is not being acted upon. And we're leaving with just, uh, you know, the, the fee that brought us out there. Tune-ups, to me, when we only collect, you know, the, the customer responds to the $49.99 or the $89, $99, whatever special to come out for a tune-up. And that's all we collect. That, to me, is also a $0 call. Gotcha. Right. And and even because last time, you know, we got together, we talked a lot about maintenance. So if and selling maintenance agreements. So even in my world, if someone bought that maintenance in the past. Yeah, they did. They did pay something they prepaid for this visit. But if nothing else happens, that is also a zero dollar call. So, Edward, does that help? Answer yeah, that? Dude, that totally helps. In fact, I was just having this conversation because. I'm, I'm here at a distributor event and talking to all these sales guys that have dealers that they're like, oh, my God, I wish they would implement service maintenance agreements. You yeah. know, this is reoccurring revenue for them. But you know what? Tons of zero dollar calls take place there all the time, even though you're collecting, say, thirty dollars a month right. for that comfort club. If you're just going out to change like a filter. And you're not maximizing the opportunity because you rolled that truck out there like, man, you better have somebody trying to sell them like a smart thermostat or something. Right. Yeah. It's it's again, it's basically a zero dollar call because why do we need to eliminate these? You know, uh, because we got to think about the math behind this. So we kind of did the what what is a zero dollar call? Why are these a problem that need to be eliminated? So just. This is a real world example. I was just, Edward, I told you I was in New Jersey at a company last week. I was in the earthquake uh, that happened on Friday. But this is real math from a real HVAC company. Not a, not a super large one. I think many can relate. They have about five technicians in the service department. So not a lot of overhead, not a lot of office staff. But it, it costs $279 to send a technician to a call. Oof. That's that sunk real real costs in wow. there that's not even including that in the us and across north america a lot of times of the marketing budgets there can often be an extra 150 to 300 dollars to acquire a customer i think it could be even higher if even, higher. <laughs> even higher yeah. uh so 270 dollars in direct cost the technician's time the office time that booked it the fuel you know the vehicle uh, yeah, Don, I see the question. I'm breaking it down right now for you, right? We, we got time, we got fuel, we got vehicles, we got office staff, we've got all of those things add up. Plus, like we said, customer acquisition costs. So uh, in order to make any profit then, if we're 279, someone mentioned in the chat that theirs is right around 200. Uh, you know, this probably regionally affects it a little bit, but it kind of are all in the same boat. Uh, yeah, software phone costs at plus 150. What does our average ticket need to be in order for us to make any money? And and this is this is the problem that we're talking to. Uh, really, in this scenario for this company, in order to make any money, and it sounds like a lot of people can relate to these numbers. We got to be somewhere around 750 on demand and 350 on maintenance and tune-ups. That's got to be our average tickets. Yeah. Or, or we've got a service department, we're running calls where uh, best case, we're sort of breaking even. 
Yeah. Uh, worst case, uh, we're losing money. And, and that's showing up where, where's the cash? We're busy all the time. Where's the cash flow? And, and so the zeros are profit killers. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not just a zero. It's, the, the, it's not just a zero. Zero is neutral. It's a negative because we're 279 plus 200 plus 300 in the hole, right? So this, this, this is the problem. And do you think real quick, uh, somebody had mentioned, you know, don't forget uh, software like Workies and the phone costs, which by the way, Workies has phones too. So you're, if you're paying for phones separately, you're paying too much. Uh, yeah. But uh, do we factor that in too? Like, or, or, or a lot of times, like some of those are more just overhead. And so when we're talking yeah. about like the 279, we're, we're talking direct costs. Yeah, that's like, what I was assuming yeah. too. Like we yeah, didn't necessarily look at the software here right now. No, that's just overhead. This, I'm not going to look at the rent on my building and, you know, like, yeah, you can't look at everything. Think, think about it this way, like software, phones, the lights, you pay those whether you're running a call or not. Right. That's, that's what the definition of overhead is. So when we talk about like the 279, you only incur those costs, you know, to send that tech to that job. Those are direct costs. Uh, so th this is the reality, you know, and I, I see comments about how do we justify this? Well, how do you stay in business? You know, how do you, uh, especially when we're talking like HVAC, plumbing, electrical, other related, these are, these are services that are necessities for people where we're going in there and we're saving them sometimes from horrible situations from, uh, heat and from cooling and from, you know, potential flooding and electrical potential fires. And, uh, in order to be around to help people, we, this is just business. We, we gotta be profitable. So, right. uh, let's, let's talk about, let's, let's, let's start to jump into. So we know, we know what a $0 call is. We know why it's a problem if we're getting zeros. Why do these happen? So, uh, so Edward, let's think about like a, maybe an alternate world for a second here where whatever your company is, they called you, right? You're, you're probably not doing door to door uh, in this. Maybe you have a model of that, but for, for most of these companies, they called us. We go out there, we show them things. Here's things that are wrong here. You know, here's issue. Here's potential issues. Here's things that may become an issue. Why doesn't the homeowner go, oh, wow. I had no idea this was going on. This is the air my family breathes. This is the water they drink. This is the electricity, you know, that keeps us safe and, and powers things. Please take care of everything. Yeah. I, I can't go on living here knowing that I have issues. It, money is no problem. We have money, right? Please uh, take care of it. That's, that's sort of like an alternate world. Instead, what do we run into? We run into, oh, okay, I need to think about it. Uh, just yeah. send me over some estimates and I'll, and I'll get back to you. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm almost out of time. Are, are you almost done? I got to go pick up my, uh, my kids. Yeah. Uh, oh, my, my spouse isn't here. I, I can't make a decision. So the, in, instead of that perfect alternate world, and I see comments in the chat about they hear these things all the time, uh, where it would make logical sense. They called you. This is their house. This is where they live. Yeah. Why are they not taking care of these things? We, we get this other issue and let's talk about why that happens. One, and I'm going to break these down and more. I'm basically going to give the reasons first and then I'm going to break down each one. All right. Kind of switch up how I presented things last time. All right. So we're going to talk about our own limiting beliefs. We're going to talk about how just, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but a lot of times your customers just don't believe you. Uh, trust is low. I can see that. Uh, oftentimes we're maybe having the wrong conversations at the wrong time. We don't understand the, the buying journey that our customers need to go through. I'll break that down. Uh, we lack a consistent process that we follow on every single call. So it's hard to replicate results because it's chaos. Right. Every, every call is, was run differently, uh, approached differently, and we've got chaos going on. So there's no consistent results. And then there's no goals, no data, kind of no expectations. Maybe we'd even know what the average ticket should be to make money. That's part of the expectations. Maybe that was 
news for a lot of people who saw when I when I posted that of where we need to be. And then uh, I'm saving a bonus. So it's a teaser, right? There's going to be a six that I'm not going to mention right now. You got to get there. Ooh, um, you got to wait. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to <laughs> wait for that one. Okay. Hey, so, don't anybody leave. I no, want to see the not, same number the of people, is, if not more, by the end of this call. For those who for those who stay for the six, they've got, they've got a, a huge advantage. Okay. All right. So, Edward, do you know what a, a limiting belief is? Have you heard that before? I mean, I, I feel like I've heard it all the time. It's just like uh, feel like don't not not believing in myself, right? Like yeah, and I'm 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 kind of a data driven math. Does the math work? Business is math. Not a big like woo woo, you know, type of type of person. But this is a real thing. Limiting beliefs are a real thing. Uh, even back to like Henry Ford had a quote: uh, "Whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right." Right. So you, even back to you know Henry Ford a hundred uh, some years ago, a limiting belief is there are things that we believe to be true. They're not true. We believe them to be true. And because we believe it, it limits us. Mm. So examples of limiting beliefs. No one's buying in this economy. It's not true. Consumer spending is through the roof. Uh, you know, it's just not true. Uh, but if we believe that, it is true for us. It's almost like we're going to manifest that. Because- yeah. And like I said, I'm not a big like manifesting woo woo, you know, type of, but this is, this is true. If, if we believe that no one's going to want to spend money on their air quality, it's not true. The indoor air quality market is billions of dollars and growing faster than anything. It's yeah. just not true. But if we believe that's true, it will be true for us. So I can't go, I can't, not talk about this topic of eliminating zero dollar calls without talking about this. And that's why I put it first is that I, I have an interesting perspective to Edward. And I'm sure you do as well, because you and I talk to a lot of companies. So we get a broad spectrum of, Hey, how's it going? And answers to that. So what am I supposed to do in my position where a good majority of my time, I talk to technicians. Uh, just yesterday, I talked to a, like 120 technicians. And you've got two techs in this operating in the same economy, in the same city, going to the same neighborhoods. And one of them tells you it has never been better to be a tech. I am having my best year ever. I just had my best month ever. And then the next one says, this is the worst time to be a tech. (laughs) I am struggling. No one wants to spend money. What am I supposed to do with that? Yeah. Right. But, for each, for both of them, they are both right. It is true for both of them. So it, it all comes down to your beliefs on things. And so uh, I don't have, I don't have the, I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I'm not, uh, this is a self-reflection thing of what things do I believe that there's some evidence that it's actually not true. You know, some other people are doing, are performing in the same environment. Our competitors seem to be thriving. What do they believe differently about what I believe? And, you know, and how is what I believe holding me back? Just real quick, I want to, you know, last time too, I, you know, I shamelessly plugged my podcast, Edward, and I'm, I'm going to kind of do that in a roundabout way. I just want to share a clip uh, from, uh, from our podcast here at SBE, where the, it's all interviews with technicians. And this was a recent episode, episode 39. If people want to listen to more of it, follow along. They've got options here. They can scan it like a menu. But just a real short clip I want to hear from a tech who, uh, this tech last year did almost $3 million in revenue by himself, uh, running a lot of maintenance calls. This is a tech that rarely has $0 calls. Around the country, different techs, different managers, service managers. Oh, can you try bumping the volume? Right now on their system, no one wants to buy. It's the economy. It, limiting beliefs. Put, yeah, I call that limiting it. belief. Go for it. That's limiting beliefs. And I know it's hard, and we get discouraged. You just got to grind a little harder, and you got to ignore that. Don't think that because if you do, you're going to set it in your mind, and then you get oh, 30, 45 minutes, get in and out. They're not going to buy anything anyway. No, if they're not buying, it means you're not building value. You're not slowing down. You're not helping them see the whole picture. Because when you slow down, 
and you share with them the need that they have that they didn't know about knowledge is power so when you can share with them really what they have going on everybody can finance it, again it, it, you got to build the value so curtis believes different things that a lot of people believe uh he he's very aware of limiting beliefs so I, I just love that i think that's a powerful thing so uh moving on the reason number two that we get zero dollar visits the customers just don't believe you and it has i, I don't want to offend anyone it has nothing to do with likely you per se it's an industry thing it's a uh do they see you as a salesperson versus seeing you as a uh you know an advisor uh type of people are just leery of anyone you know who has something to sell uh, just a quick story, Edward. So uh, a, a bit ago, you know, maybe a few years ago, uh, I had to take my wife's car to get an oil changed. And I was very disgruntled about it, had a bad attitude. It wasn't my car, you know, and, and all that. So I, I take it to the, the dealer to get the oil changed. And I have the attitude of, they better not try uh, to sell me anything else. I'm here for the oil change. The moment that service advisor walks out, you know, uh, and I, even, I said, it's just an oil change, please. That's all I want done. <laughs> so, right, I'm, I'm sure we've all been there, right? Yeah, and so well. I'm, I'm sitting out there, you know, enjoying the, the, the free coffee and, you know, watching TV. And I get a text message uh, and I open it and it's, uh, it says like, hey, uh, this is Nate. I'm, I'm the mechanic for your vehicle today. I've been working on it. Please take a look at this uh, video that I did for you. And so, okay, so I open it up and uh, it's like Nate and he's kind of filming it on his phone and he's stepped back so that I can see it's my wife's car. And he says, hey, you know, sir, we we're changing the oil and we, you know, we do a complimentary, you know, top off the wiper fluid, you know, uh, do, do all these things. And we saw some indication that there, there might be a leak happening because, you know, we saw like some buildup and things like that. So we did do a leak test and then he like zoomed in. And I could see the bubbles moving out. And he's like, and there's definitely, you can see it for yourself. There's definitely a leak going on here. We're going to do a little bit of work, see what's going on, see if that affected anything. And I'll come talk with you in about five to 10 minutes. And I was like, oh, he got me. <laughs> I don't, I don't have to believe Nate. Uh, I see it for myself. Uh, belief is now removed. Uh, from the table. And and so by the time five to 10 minutes later that uh, Nate came out, I, he basically came out and he said, Hey, did you see that video? I was like, yeah, I did see it. How much? And he, he basically gave me some numbers and we were good to go. He didn't have to do an ounce of selling. We only really have to sell to, when we feel like we have to convince uh, somebody. Right. Yeah. Uh, and belief is a huge factor in this. And so if we feel like we're in these positions and we're trying to convince people to take work, it's just a lot of times they don't know if they can believe you. Uh, I need to do more research. I've never heard of that. Let me look it up. Uh, I need to watch some videos. I need to talk to someone else. I need to get a second opinion. So again, just a real quick uh, video from what this looks like from an HVAC side. tested your capacitor here and your compressor side perfectly fine that's most likely going to be due to the fact that we have this hard start kit in here um, taking care of that compressor unfortunately on your fan side uh, you're rated for 7.5 microfarads plus or minus six percent now it's down to 5.8 i'll actually show you real quick instead of just talking about it so on your fan side 7.5 and 5.8. Uh, so we're definitely going to be way below that tolerance. Uh, that is going to make your compressor, my apologies, your uh, outdoor fan run a lot harder. Um, and since we've already replaced it, I want to be able to take care of it as long as possible. So I would recommend replacing this capacitor. Um, I wanted to double check with the office first to see when we installed it, because if it was within two years, our warranty would cover it. Um, just because they should definitely last longer than that but we replaced it in 2020 so now we're at four years um and the life expectancy of so just an example there of i don't need to like imagine the old way the technicians go out they're working they come in hey i found a problem uh here's why it's a problem do you want to go ahead and take care of it it's going to be this amount of money i you're ahead of me i don't know if i believe you yet 
Yeah. And, and this, this ties into wrong conversations, wrong timing. Yeah. So if we start to incorporate the use of photos and videos, it's going to drastically reduce those uh, zero dollars and combine it with having the right conversations at the right time uh, and take that belief off the table. What is the wrong conversation at the wrong time? This is something that actually comes from the 60s. I didn't invent this, but it explains a lot of the missteps that we get, all those uh, excuses that we call them that I was saying of like, I need to think about it. This kind of explains what goes on there where customers have different levels of awareness. We've got uh, level one, they're just completely unaware. They, they have no idea they have a problem uh, that's worth solving. Level two, they're problem aware. They've got a sense that there's a problem, but they haven't really considered a solution and they don't even maybe know that there is a solution. There's just kind of like, oh, I just thought that is what it is. Maybe like a loud unit or uh, one that seems to run all the time. Uh, they're like, well, it's just old. They might not know that there's a solution. Level three, they're becoming more solution aware. So now they kind of know the solution they want. They know the results they want. They just don't know that you can do it for them. Level four, uh, back to the level three, IAQ products are a good example of that. I know I have allergies. I know I would like to not feel my allergies. I had no idea that, that you as an HVAC company could do anything for me uh, with that. Level four, they start to become product aware. Uh, they start to become familiar with the products that you have. They're just not yet sure yet if it's the right one for them. And then at the top, we have our most aware customers. They're ready to buy. They're, they become repeat buyers. They're loyal customers and they send you referrals. So Edward, maybe you can kind of see already where I'm going with this. What happens if we go run a tune up and we have a maintenance or we're running a maintenance or we're doing a visit and they are a level one or a level two but we're having level four, level five conversations. Oh, you might as well pack it up and go home, man. <laughs> yeah, they they are at level one of like, hey, listen, I didn't even know there was anything going on. I'm not even sure if I believe you that there's right. something going on in your in your talking about a specific product. You're talking about uh, an air cleaner, you know, or whole house filtration, or uh, something like that. You're talking products and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, I, I'm not even sure I have a problem here. It's that's the wrong conversation at the wrong time. Yeah. And so when someone, when someone is down lower on that, you know, level one, level two, we need to be more indirect. We need to ask more questions and, and focus on discovery, not talking about our products. We need to be, what have you noticed? Hey, does it always make that noise? Uh, how, how, long, how long have you been noticing that uh, your energy bills have been going up? When, when did you start noticing some water stains or some water issues? Those are very vague, indirect questions. As someone moves up the levels of awareness, we can get more and more direct with our conversations like, okay, uh, you know, you're problem aware. You're, you sound like your solution or what, what all solutions have you tried before? Did any of those help? That, uh, so it, it helps us shape the type of questions we need to ask if we become aware of this. And so we stop doing those wrong conversations at the wrong time. In, in that video that we showed of a capacitor that's out of tolerance, that, that customer is going to be a level one. They don't know, they don't magically know that <laughs> something's out of tolerance. And if we come in talking about the solution, we're likely going to lose them. They're not ready for that conversation yet. So uh, this, this, this takes some skill set of understanding which questions are appropriate at what time. The videos help so much because they help move them up the levels because they can watch a video now and become uh, problem aware, right? So maybe maybe even like uh, the video that I had at with my wife's car, I was, I was completely unaware. I was there for an oil change. By watching the video, I became problem and solution aware before before the technician even got to me. Okay, let's let's get through these. Uh, this one is really important. <laughs> we lack a consistent process we follow on every call. Do we call ahead the same way? Do we arrive the same way? Do we always create a great first impression? Do we know what questions we need to ask before we get to work? Do we know? 
uh, the best way to have those level of awareness conversations. This can all get standardized inside of our companies with a process. Something that so this we, is also called AKA uh, flying by the seat of your pants. Yeah. Uh, chaos is uh, a gamble uh, approaching approaching life through chaos uh, rarely gets us the results uh, that we want. The, the thing about chaos is sometimes it does, yeah. uh, but it's not predictable. It's not consistent. When, when we follow a consistent, predictable process, we, we should expect consistent, predictable results. Uh, and, and so uh, this this is a game changer for many companies is when they start to follow a process. This is an example of a process. This is for running an HVAC visit that we know no matter why we're there, we're going to go through there and have pass fail conversations uh, with the homeowner about everything because it's a thorough, detailed. It's not based on how we feel that day. <laughs> it's not based on, uh, you know, the mood or the or, or any of that. It's it's consistent. Customers really appreciate this too. It builds brand loyalty because Edward, uh, maybe you have a favorite restaurant, maybe you don't. What uh, what happens if you go to that favorite restaurant and they don't like bring out the free chips and salsa? Oh yeah. man, completely changes. Well, I mean, I try to be a little bit more reasonable these days, but yes, I've been in the situation where I'm like, oh man, this just ruined my day. Like, you know, my opinion of that restaurant has just gone out the window. Yeah, this place is falling apart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, customers, that's, that's a huge component of brand loyalty is the consistency and the predictability. You know that, hey, when I go there, I'm going to get those free chips and salsa or I'm going to get whatever it is it's the consistency and the predictability that leads to brand loyalty and so if we're operating on chaos where it it kind of depends on which tech you get which day of the week uh that's that's tough to to be loyal to that company well and we're creatures of habit too you know like when we like something we're, we we want to see it all the time you know yes and I think based on what you're saying, something else to take into perspective is like, you know, this might be an opportunity for you to step up your game because your customers actually do appreciate these types of things. Big when time. I had an HVAC technician walk into my home, heck, I even had a handyman service walk into my home and do something similar where they put on white booties. You oh, know? Yeah. I, was, I was like, are you kidding me? Wow, this yes. is great. And then it raised the bar. I felt like I needed to have that type of service every single time, or I was sticking my nose up at the next company. Absolutely. And if that same company, let's say they do that, you have them as your company, you know, for three to four years, and then someone at the company shows up and doesn't do that. Right. That's, that's a problem. We have to be consistent, it has to be consistent and predictable. So standardizing things like this is so important. It'll, It'll eliminate a lot of those zero dollar uh, uh, visits by having a, a process that you know gives you consistent and predictable results. Yeah. Okay. Number five: no goals, no data, or expectations. Even to the point where um, there might be some people, uh, you know, listening to this. Like we we don't have that many zero dollar calls. Well, do we track it? Uh, is is that something that we actually have the info for? Because I've seen this happen so many times where when it's not being tracked and it's not being measured, we don't quite understand the severity maybe of the problem. For for companies who are kind of operating a little bit more of the, the chaos and not tracking data, in my experience, the percent of $0 calls that they're going through is probably around 50 to 60% of them. They just, they're just not quite aware of it yet because they're not tracking it. So step one is tracking this thing, uh, get data. Step two is setting goals, having expectations. So e even, even the idea of, I went through kind of the typical, um, average tickets that a service department needs to actually make money just based on fuel costs and market rates and all that. Do we even have that as an expectation? For ourselves that that's where we need to be with our average tickets so the, the the lack of these things the lack of goals the lack of data the lack of expectations is more chaos so lacking a consistent predictable process that gives consistent predictable results is a lot of chaos 
combine that with no goals, no data, no expectation, that is massive chaos. Yeah. Okay, so I mentioned a bonus one, a bonus one for uh, everyone who's made it here. And it's because we're not offering payment options. Who, so if we need a 750 average ticket, we're starting to get into territory where this is a major expense uh, for the home. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, as we creep to that a thousand over a thousand. So we've got a problem. If that's where we need to be in order to stay in business. But now every, any, basically anything we're doing for the most part is being viewed as a major expense. We're going to be at a bit of an impasse. And the, the solution to this is the ability for the homeowner to make payments where they, where they can split it up into manageable, doable, budgetable chunks. Every, everybody's doing this. Amazon is offering you the ability to split things into payments. Almost any e-commerce store you go into, even, even uh, buying shoes for $100, they still offer you the ability to make payments on it so and we even find, have sorry i gotta i gotta have my shameless yes, plug Edward, if, if, if you're go for it. If you're using workies you know we've got a couple of different uh finance partners one directly integrated into our software uh sunbit so you can drive more business serve more customers you know there's interest interest i can't speak interest-free payment plans you know um, I know that 99% or uh, actually I think it's closer to 90%, but that's still pretty high, right? Are going to get approved. And mm -hmm. instead of having to pay today, the client can split their costs into four interest free payments. And I mean, we're talking a ticket that might only be a thousand dollars, but you know mm -hmm. what? That thousand dollars is a lot of money to one particular customer, right? I'm sorry. I don't have the luxury of just pulling out a thousand dollars today, but yeah. I, I could probably handle two fifty. you know? Yeah. Do, do we want to limit ourselves to the people who do have, you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, just, Oh, here you go. Or do we want to open our services up to everybody? Absolutely. Everybody can make a payment. Yep. Right. And so the, the technicians that I know who have the highest average tickets will tell me, and you can listen to it on the podcast that around 80 to 90% of the time, the homeowner chooses the route of making payments. These, yeah. these are technicians who average $2,000 a ticket, right? Oh, and, and also I wanted to throw out there because there were some comments about my $10,000 limit with Sunbit. Um, we, we now also work, um, we've got another finance partner up to $25,000. So yeah. we, can, we can definitely help you out there as well. Nice. This, this is, this is so critical. Uh, imagine, you know, what things cost now, what do we think it's going to be three years from now, five years from now, this is only going to become more and more important. And the companies that just, they, they need to be implementing this now, and this will, drastically eliminate the number of zero dollar tickets that we're doing uh this will drastically open up the oh i can take care of in that alternate fantasy world scenario you found all these things please it'll make that a reality because they can go ahead and take care of these things and budget it into a monthly payment so it's it's so important to have the ability to do that it's a huge unique differentiator still kind of in the trades but it's not in other uh, if, uh, Edward, if you came to me and let's say I worked for AT&T and I sold cell phones and I was like, okay, Edward, you can get going. That's going to be $12,000. You would yeah. tell me to go pound sand. Right. Uh, but instead, you know, I tell Big you, it's, rocks, you man. yeah, 200 bucks, 250 bucks a month. And you're like, yeah, great. Uh, fine. Okay. So let's summarize. This is the action plan. If we want to eliminate $0 calls, this is the action plan. We need to get our mindset right. We need to think about the limiting beliefs. What are things that we believe? And then when we don't get the result we want, we just blame it on that. Well, I'm not making any money. It's just the economy or it's inflation. We need, we need to go inward. It's our limiting beliefs. 
uh, start using photos and videos. You know, a lot of companies take those photos and videos, but that's not what I'm talking about. Communicate those, send those to the customer. You're out working, just text them a stream of uh, videos so that later you can have a different level of awareness conversation of, hey, did you see those videos? Understand the right time for the right conversations as your customer unaware, are they problem aware, solution aware? Uh, where are they at? Have, have better conversations. Train and coach to a consistent process. Find a, a consistent process and please uh, follow a consistent process so that you can see what results you get and then make changes and actually track if that works. Set goals, track everything, communicate to everyone on your team what the expectations are. Hey, in order to stay in business, we need a 750 average ticket. Make sure everyone knows the expectations and then offer payment options. That's, that is the uh, action plan. Uh, if anyone wants help in eliminating $0 calls, this is our bread and butter. This is where we really excel is we can help uh, HVAC, plumbing, electrical uh, specifically. That's where we can help. So if people want a, 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 an intro call, a 15 minute call with us, they can scan this and we'd, we'd be happy to offer more help in eliminating those $0 calls. Awesome. Well, Derek, uh, are, are, are there any other grand prizes? I, I know you, you offered us that one golden nugget towards the end. What, what else do you have for us? Um, I think we're going to collaborate again next month, right? There's, Edward, there, uh, yeah, I, I hope so. There's so many things we could talk about. Yeah. Uh, especially, you know, there's even themes. There's a companion piece, you know, to this as well of, uh, we could go a number of different routes. I, I think even too, I don't know, Edward, how often your, uh, you know, your customers are reaching out. If they have ideas, I think they should reach out uh, to Workies as well. And we can, we could shake things around what they want uh, also. So, Absolutely. So, folks, we have actually been doing, you know, simmering on some ideas of what we can bring Eric and uh, Derek. Excuse me. It's been a really long week. Right now. <laughs> but uh, now we've been kicking around some ideas, but we would love to hear from you. So we're going to be sending out an email with a recording of the uh, webinar from today, because I know that we had a couple of folks asking us about that. We'd love to hear from you, though. Please take a moment, reply back. Let us know what you'd like to hear about from SBE and Derek. And, uh, you know, we'll take your uh, thoughts into consideration. And, and hopefully we'll be coming back to talk about what matters the most to you next month. Yeah, for sure. And uh, if, if anyone has any questions, if anything needs clarified, please pop it into the into the comments. Um, yeah, we're going to stay on for a few more minutes, you know, but you feel free to to drop off right now. But I think we did a pretty good job, Derek, of trying to, you know, answer everyone's questions yeah. today um, as they came up. I know there were some questions about third party financing and whether or not it integrated into workies. And so, yes, I did answer, you know, with uh, Sunbit, we can finance up to ten thousand dollars. We've just brought on WiseTech as another partner. I don't even think you're going to be able to see the links on our website yet, but that is also being worked into the estimates because I actually wanted to ask for your opinion on this, Derek. What are your thoughts? If you have on a proposal or an estimate, let's say this shocking you know, $23,000 heat pump, and I'm like, oh, my Lanta, I cannot afford that, right? Mm -hmm. But... If it says with approved credit as low as X, right, it's much more palatable to to put that in front of a customer and say it's only going to be a couple hundred dollars a month, right? Absolutely. But here's my big question. How important is it from your perspective to actually have that on there versus saying, all right, you know, because I think I think it's all about how you present the information. Mm -hmm. Like if you say, all right. I know you're already having a heart attack because you just saw 23 grand, right? But let me show you. I actually have a few different finance solutions because what I find happens all the time, Derek, is that guys get really fixated on like, well, my distributor told me that I had to use 
synchrony or, or this, mm -hmm. or, you know, X, Y, Z, by the way, I don't care who you use, right? <laughs> so bottom line is they get fixated on this one company and they're like, well, I can only do it if it's baked into the proposal. Does that really matter that much, Derek? Or could you just simply say, all right, customer, you know, 23 grand, it's a lot of money. I don't, I don't doubt you on that. Right. Yeah. But here we go. Now check out my friends over here at XYZ Finance and we can take care of all of this. You know, if your credit's approved, it's going to be as low as this. I just wanted to know, bottom line, how important is it that it be built into the proposal? So there's, there's, that's a, such a great question because there's very layers to this. Uh, and I think the way that I want to start by answering that is I think a lot of people know that they should be offering financing, but when it's difficult to do, or it's complicated or it feels uh -huh. awkward, they just are less likely to do it. Right. So that's, that's like the most important thing I think at the start is, what is the way that our guys are actually going to offer it? It's gotta be easy. <laughs> it's it's gotta be simple. And it, well, we don't wanna feel like uh, if the customer asks too many questions, they extend past our you know, knowledge of how this works. So. You know, a lot of times when it's all kind of seamless, we just see the most actual usage of it because it's it, it's there, it, it it works, right? But in from the from the customer standpoint, so that's from like the user standpoint, right? Like if, it, if it's complicated, if we have to like uh, jump through you know hoops and you know and all these things, we're just less likely to offer it. Mm -hmm. From from the customer standpoint, they just want to be able to afford it. There, there's things at their house. They just want to feel like they're not pigeonholed. They're not being told what to do, that you have yeah. empathy for them, that you understand the situation that they're in. And you're not only helping them with the problem, you're also helping them figure out how to pay for it. Sounds so, to me like limiting belief. If you're sitting there thinking like, this is too difficult. I can't do this. It's, it's not. Right? It's not. And you're also leaving money on the table. You're leaving because so much money on the table. Somebody wanted to spend 23 grand on a heat pump with you. Yeah. They just didn't have the money to give it to you cash today, right? Yeah, it's, it's, and it, it's a massive, this is a massive limiting belief area because everything else in, the, in everyone else's life is a monthly payment. Yeah. Like literally everything else is a monthly payment. Let's, let's, not keep trying to be the exception uh, to it. So yes, for sure, the $23,000 heat pump, but also the $800 repair, the $900 repair, the $1,000 repair, those are also, you know, and so it's, it's the ability to have that empathy and ask questions at the right level of awareness, not have the wrong conversation at the wrong time. Yeah. Uh, just ask people like Edward, listen, I, I know that you probably weren't planning to spend money on your house today, you know, but we did discover a few things that concerned you. And I know that this is a big project. Edward, was this something you were budgeting for or putting away money for? Absolutely not. And Edward, that's completely normal. Most people we work with have it. And so to help with that, we actually just offer the ability to split it into monthly payments. Would that, would that help you out? Yeah, that'd be a game. Okay. Well, you want, you want to look at a few options then? Yeah. That's the conversation. That's, that's the conversation. And then actually do that for them. Yeah. Well, cool. I don't know if we have any other questions. I'm scanning, scanning here. Uh, the most, the most popular question that has been asked many times is, uh, which is, I think is great. This is a good sign. The yeah. most popular question is, can I get a recording? Yes. And the answer to that is an overwhelming. Yes. You can get a recording. Yes. You can share it with anyone. You know, it post, post it on Facebook if you want to. We would love that. So <laughs> yeah, we will send that out, though. Uh, just give us some time to clean it up. Uh, my marketing team would probably have this out tomorrow would be my guess. But um, we'll have that to you shortly. We'd also love to hear from you. Any suggestions you have for another SBE Workies edition? Um, yeah, we're, we're uh, excited that you guys all took some time out of your day. Thank you so much for attending and we will talk to you soon. See you guys next time. All right. Bye-bye.